Hey, it is Pixel, and tonight I did not think I would be talking about Rogue Legacy 2. As a matter of fact, I sat down this evening with a brand new game, and I was going to show some new gameplay footage of this new game I have, and just as I did so, I got a notification that Cellador Games had tweeted out that they are launching tomorrow morning in their early access. We knew that already, but what we didn't know was that they put out a mini patch and they changed a couple things about the game. Most importantly about that patch, they added a brand new bonus boss that is a very challenging boss. And what they're thinking of doing here is having a challenge boss for every major patch they do. So everybody can, can play those that are participants of the early access, but then they'll be removing those challenge bosses as they go through. So one per patch and move on, so on and so forth. Well, obviously, I immediately dropped the game that I was working on and went straight back to Rogue Legacy 2 because I wanted to see what is this challenge boss? I want to be challenged. That's what drives me. Now, there were some other changes in the game, and I'll get to those, but they're less important, so we'll move those to the end of the video. But for right now, I want to talk about the challenge boss. I'm not sure what I thought it would be. Like, I don't know what I expected, but when I got to the secret boss, or I shouldn't say secret, it's the challenge boss, I found out it's two Lamex, which is kind of seems like, oh, of course they did two Lamex. Two Lamex is a very interesting fight because there is a lot of luck that goes into the fight. But let's do a little teeny bit of strategy talk about this fight, getting ready for it. And then I'm going to let you in on a cheat that I found that, trust me, will probably be dead by the time you're watching this video. As soon as the developers get wind that this can be done, it will no longer be able to be done. So fighting two Lamex is, is very much a game of, sure, a little bit of strategy, but then also a little bit of luck. It's gonna depend on how many times you get into situations where they're doing moves that you can't anticipate. But what this is going to really depend on is your ability to see what Lamex, what each of the Lamex is doing with their warning warm-up maneuver I guess their their warm-up pose right they all have very distinct between the I think it's six attacks that they do they have very distinct pre motions before the attack now if you see that motion it makes this fight much more choreographed you can see that oh he's gonna do the spinning thing up oh he's gonna do the sword swipe and a fire plume oh he's gonna do the big laser thing which that one you can kind of see a million miles away but your ability to react to those, but also not, not just your ability to directly see them, but your ability to see them in your peripheral vision and know which attack is being done by which Lamech at what time is gonna be imperative. You're, you're gonna have to be a professional at that, which means you're gonna have to fight this boss a ton of times. Let me also be clear that I have not beaten this boss yet without cheating. I have beaten this boss, but I cheated. How did I cheat? <laughs> well, let's tell that kind of interesting story. So as I sat down to play this boss, I got my way to it and I went through and fought it once and just got obliterated and probably did it about four more times and was determined because I really wanted to put a video out of me beating this boss. So after about four times trying, it became very tiring having to run back through the first biome every single time I wanted to fight it. Now, in the first game, when you had the remix bosses, they allowed you to just pop out and then jump back in and fight again. I think that this fight kind of needs that because it's a little bit monotonous having to run back through the dungeon when you've already purchased everything and gold means nothing to you. All you're trying to do is get to the boss. I think that they should make this more like a Super Meat Boy type experience where you just spawn, 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 spawn. Because it's gonna take that little bit of luck and it's gonna take a ton of practice for anybody to beat this realistically. However, after my experience this evening, very much it's possible. I very much think it's possible. So my thought when I was repeating this boss over and over again is, I'm getting sick of running this dungeon. You know what I'm gonna do? When I get in there and fight, 
if I look like I'm gonna lose, I'm just gonna Alt F4, reboot the game, and I know that they're not gonna have a, a save stamp in the middle of the Lamech fight, so I'll start at the beginning of the dungeon, or the first dungeon, just like in the first game, and then I'll be able to use my warpers to warp there, so I'll save a significant amount of time. If I'm sure that I'm gonna lose, let's do that. Let me be clear at this point, this game does not anticipate that you're going to do that. So one of the interesting design choices that they made in this game is, or for this boss fight, is that right before you go into the boss, you get a choice of all these different relics and you get a choice of increasing your max health at the cost of taking a little bit of damage or healing yourself up. You get three different apple trees that allow you to do that. And then you get a choice between two different sets of relics and the relics each cost either ma maximum health or some of your active health pool. When you choose those things and then you go to fight La the two Lamics, if you Alt F4 and then go back into the game, your choices still stick, but the things all reappear. So for the relics, this doesn't really matter because the relics don't end up stacking. At least that's been my observation for the ones that I've been able to stack. If I have multiple of this little shield that makes me invulnerable for three hits, I don't get six hits. I still just get three. That's not a big deal. But what does stack is the health. And let me be clear, I think I've already said this once in the video, but this is going to be fixed in like two seconds. This bug will go away probably the time that they see this video or they hear about this method. This is going to go away. But what you can do for probably about the next 12 to 24 hours if you get to this boss is you just run up to the tree and take the maximum health and then you Alt F4. Once you walk into the boss room, Alt F4. You'll go back to the dungeon, and then you have to warp back up there. The trees will be replenished again. Now you can take more maximum health, and then warp back in, and then kill the game. And then repeat this process over and over again, you'll end up with about a thousand health. Now the trick here is that even though it's costing you health to take the maximum health, as long as you leave yourself enough health that you might be able to get hit once or twice on your way back to the room, when you get to the room, you get a little bit of health just for going into the bonus boss. Then, once you're in the room, you just take a little bit of damage and increase your maximum health again. Repeat, 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 and then I had about a thousand health. So after I had about a thousand health, I practiced on this boss. It made practicing so much easier. And so far, I've only been able to beat the boss with about 700 health, which is about double what would be natural, a little bit more than double what would be natural. Um, but beating the boss, you don't really get anything for beating the boss. In fact, I'll leave the surprise of what happens up to you. I, I don't even want to spoil it. It's, it's nothing really spectacular. You beat the bosses and then basically you have to start over at the beginning of the dungeon again. You, you don't get anything for it. You just get a little message, but it, it's a little funny and I'll just, I'll leave it be. I won't show it off. But anyways, so that's the current trick that you can use if you'd like to cheat. Uh, good luck trying to use it because more than likely by the time you've heard this or seen this video uh, This is long gone uh, aside from that there really isn't a lot of strategy But there was a couple other chain things that, that changed that I wanted to talk about very quickly uh, first of all they have decreased the Amount of points that you can put into certain things in the tree it used to be 10 They brought it down to 7 they did a little bit of balancing on the tree um, they also did a little balancing on the equipment. It was before that you could have a weight limit that was so high that your equipment was, you could kind of pick whatever you wanted. Now they've scaled it back enough that you're going to have to be a little bit more choosy with exactly what equipment that you uh, put on yourself. There was other little teeny things. It was mostly just a, a pretty small patch that didn't seem to affect the gameplay that much. But a little bit of balancing to the trees, a little bit of balancing to the equipment it seems. And then there was the new boss and the scoring mechanisms, which those two things were really the biggest things. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. The cheat will probably be very short-lived. Uh, and the Lamex, you're just going to have to learn to see their choreographed moves, see their tells before they're doing their move, and you're going to have to be able to do that out of your peripheral vision. If you can't do that, this is going to be a very difficult boss fight for you. At some point in time, I'll probably sit down and do it legit, but I was able to beat it while cheating, and uh, yeah, maybe you'll be able to use that to your own advantage. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, check out my channel. I've got a number of other videos on Rogue Legacy 2. Until next time, 
This has been Pixel.